you know, Live Baptist Church. If you're tuned in online, thank you so much for joining us. I want to encourage us to stand at this time as we sing this uh, praise together. Hosanna.
Morning, everyone. It's good to welcome you this morning. And for those that have tuned on, tuned in online, we're glad to have you come. We're going to begin with the uh, observing the Lord's Supper. And so we have the self-dispensing uh, bread and uh, uh, wafers and cup. So those of you that are tuned in online, you can go ahead and just go to the, the kitchen and get something comparable. Uh, over the course of years, we've used cranberry sauce, uh, cranberry sauce, cranberry juice for uh, the, the liquid that represents the blood of Christ and, and uh, pita bread we've used. Uh, we've used all different kinds. Lavash we've used at times. So just something uh, that would re be representative. The main thing is we've been going through the, uh, the letters of John and the gospel writer uh, John wrote the Gospel of John, but also wrote the three letters to the churches, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. And also scholars believe that he wrote the last book of the Bible, Revelation. But it's interesting that scholars understand that John the Apostle never wrote anything that he didn't witness himself. And, is, and when Jesus was on the cross, and we've talked about this uh, last month uh, when we celebrated the Easter, uh, um, Easter Sunday, is that the last act that Jesus did before he died, before he surrendered his life to the Father, was an act of submission. And John records it that Jesus bowed his head and died. And it's interesting to note that from start to finish, Jesus always said that I do nothing but what I see the Father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son also does. And he learned obedience, the Bible says, in his suffering. And in the same way, we as Christ's followers, it's not to be unusual for us to also learn obedience in the experiences of life that we face. And so, as we uh, consider uh, that Jesus took the elements of a supper and turned it into a memorial or a symbolic uh, represented, representative of his, or representation of his life, as we read from uh, 1 Corinthians 11. So, if you would, at this time, which just kind of uh, those of us that are in person, if you pull off the top wafer, uh, the top cellophane, and then hold the wafer, and then Pastor Carl will come uh, with the continued reading uh, as as we uh, uh, observe the the cup in just a few moments. But reading from First Corinthians eleven, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As we pray together. As we prepare our hearts, as we take the bread and the cup together. Holy Father, we cannot fully understand the depth of love that you have for us. Lord Jesus, you said there is no greater love. That a man is willing to give up his life for his friends. And Lord, you called your disciples servants. You called your disciples friends and on the resurrection morning, you declared to Mary Magdalene, go and tell my brothers. And so, Lord, the intimacy of relationship that we now have with you and Holy Father, we just bow in, in humbleness because, Lord, we just can't understand how much you love. For God so loved, that you gave your own one and only Son, that whoever places their faith and trust in you, Lord, you have reserved a place in heaven that will not perish but have 
eternal life. But Lord, you defined eternal life in the garden when you declared to the Father in your prayer, now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And so Lord, thank you. Thank you for your sacrifice. The Bible says that the one who knew no sin became sin. And Isaiah the prophet said that, that you, Holy Father, placed on your son the sins and iniquities of us all. That in repentance, you said if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just. And you will forgive our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness and the blood that you shed, Lord Jesus, covered over our sins and washes us clean. And Lord, not what we have done, but what you have done for us, we are grateful. And so, Holy Father, Holy Spirit, may you search our hearts and see if there is any part of us that will not in this moment surrender to you and give total devotion to you, Lord Jesus. You are Lord and Master. And Holy Spirit, we give you permission that if there is any part of us that is not surrendered, oh God, may you minister your Spirit and reveal to us so immediately we can bow and surrender that attitude, that sin that you died for so that we may enjoy that intimate relationship with you. Holy Father, we invite you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you that you will guide and speak and lead us in these moments. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus said that the Son of Man comes not to be served, but to serve and to offer his life a ransom for many because Jesus did that for us. We are called upon to serve as well as we eat together. Jesus is speaking to his disciples at the supper table. And this is from the same passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting from verse 23 from the message, paraphrase. Let me go over with you, again, exactly what goes on in the Lord's Supper and why it is so centrally important. I received my instructions from the Master himself and passed them on to you. The Master, Jesus, on the night of his betrayal took bread and having given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he did the same thing with the cup. He said, this cup is my blood, my new covenant with you. And each time you drink this cup, remember me. What you must solemnly realize is that every time you eat this bread and every time you drink this cup, you reenact in your words and actions the death of the master. You'll be drawn back to this meal again and again until the master returns. And you must never let familiarity breed contempt. Anyone who eats the bread or drinks the cup of the master irreverently is like part of the crowd that jeered and spit on him at his death. Is that the kind of remembrance you want to be a part of? Examine your motives. Test your heart. Come to this meal in holy awe. As we usually do with the cup, I'm going to encourage us to take a moment of silence to pause and just think about the sacrifice of Jesus and then uh, I'll pray for us, and then we'll take the cup together. Let us pause. Jesus, long before we were born, you knew every sin we would commit, every time that we would betray you, Jesus. And still you left the glories of a perfect heaven to come to this broken world to live a perfect life and die a criminal's death. 
We remember, Lord, that you were battered and beaten beyond recognition and then crucified on the cross because of our sin. Thank you for your blood, Jesus, that washes us clean from our guilt and purifies us from our sin. We pray that you will help us to remember as we take the cup the great sacrifice of you, Jesus, which reflects your amazing love. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us take the cup together. Okay, good morning, Kino Ole Baptist. Good morning. <laughs> anyway, so how's everybody doing on this um, little overcast Sunday morning? I said it's supposed to thunder. I'm kind of disappointed it hasn't started yet, but um, that's just me personally. But um, anyway, just a few announcements before we continue. Okay, so during this season, um, I mean, even though the mask mandates have... Um, kind of gone by the wayside for now as far as the church was still keeping it going and um, just to kind of protect everybody else in the church, right? So while you're in the building, please continue to keep your mask on and once you leave the building and to get to your car, feel free to take it off. Okay, and um, for the restrooms, please, uh, you know, one person at a time in the restroom. If the door is closed, it is occupied. If it's open, then feel free to use it. And if there is a line, please mind the social distancing hash marks. Okay, so we are on social media. <laughs> so we are on social media. Uh, on Instagram, we are at Kinole Baptist. On Facebook, we are at Kinole Baptist Church. On YouTube, we are Kibach Media Ministry. And on, uh, we are um, on Gmail. Uh, you can reach us by um, email at Kinole Baptist Church at gmail.com. For those of you online, if you want to get in contact with us, please feel free to send us an email there, and um, Pastor Daniel or Pastor Carl will be happy to get back to you. Okay, you can also find out what's going on at KinoleBaptist.com. Uh, you know, the, we have Pastor, um, Pastor Daniel's previous sermons. There's articles written by both Pastor Daniel and Pastor Carl. Um, that's in the archives and everything like that. So, and upcoming events and so on and so forth. So, you know, go ahead and check that out as well. Okay, and uh, you, you will notice next to you or on the chairs next to you, there is a blue welcome card. Uh, you know, please feel free to fill um, feel, feel it out. Uh, you know, let us know you're here. You can contact church staff. Um, any decisions you make to, um, you know, today about your faith, you can let us know. Prayer request, you can always check it for confidential and, or e-prayer. And you can place it in the back of the box, uh, in the black box at the back of the auditorium. Okay, and uh, right now we're currently going through a series uh, in First, Second, and Third John um, by Tony Evans. And uh, it's, it's an amazing series. Uh, Carl and I went through the first one um, earlier this week. But um, if you want to be a part of it, again, uh, see Pastor Daniel or Pastor Carl, and we can get you set up with that. Uh, currently, we are in week two of an eight-week series. And we got two, uh, two slides for our memory verse. I couldn't yeah. fit it on one, so just letting you know. <laughs> yeah. First 15 and 16. There you go. <laughs> and, and, and it is from Colossians chapter 3, not First Colossians, but Colossians, <laughs> um, chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. So let's all say it together. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts.
Have you ever thought about how scary the prayers that we offer to God? The prayer songs. We are ready for you, Lord. There's nothing we want more. You know, that's scary to me, is that we would sing this and not understand that God looks 
Not on the outward appearances. That's what people do. But the Bible says that God looks at the heart. And so God examines your hearts and mind. God's Holy Spirit does that. And as we pray, if there's anything in us that will not surrender to you, Lord, you already have permission because you're our Lord and we're your children, we're your followers. And so anything that you need to do to cause us to surrender, Lord, we're saying you already have permission to do that. Nothing. Anything that will turn us to him. And isn't that what that word glorify is? is how do you get to know a God that you can't see? That's what people ask us all the time. You Christians, you believe in a God you can't see, but we can share that God made himself known. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. Carl mentioned that Jesus left heaven so that we may come to know, as Jesus prayed in John 17, that that this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And yet, as we talk about praying, it is very important that we pray from the heart, because that's how God will see whether we're sincere or not. And Jesus reserved, perhaps, his greatest attention Besides his disciples were the religious leaders of the day called the Pharisees. And you might seem to think that Jesus was harsh, but he was trying his best to say, you have absolutely no clue what it means to offer acceptable worship to God. And so he says, sometimes it's like the blind leading the blind. And if you are blind as you lead the people, to come to know God, then, then you often can fall in a pit and lead others to do the same. And so Jesus in Matthew 15, and before we get to 1 first, first John, he reaches back 700 years to the prophet Isaiah. And you know that, that in his teachings, he often would use Old Testament uh, prophetic words and teachings and bring it to light in that present moment. And so in Isaiah 29, as we pray, and I've often said pastoral prayer is not because the pastor prays, but it's the kind of prayer that says, God, we need help. And we're not ashamed to say, God, we need your help. But the attitude that we surrender to God has to be acceptable to God. And so God gives his word to us as reminders. That's what the Lord's Supper does. It reminds us that it costs God huge. And to follow Jesus, Jesus says, if anyone will come after me, he must deny himself. It'll cost you and me huge to follow Jesus. We can't do it half-heartedly because anything that is not wholehearted devotion is unacceptable to God. Why waste our time if we're not ready to surrender it all to Jesus? So Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah 29, you can just write that down and, and read, but it, it's, you have this. The Lord says, These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are from, far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules that they have been taught. Therefore, once more, I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder. The wisdom of the wise will perish. The intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. And woe to those. That's the strongest word in the Bible. Woe to those. Be careful, he's saying. Woe to those who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord, who do their work in darkness and think, well, who sees us? Who will know? You turn things upside down as if the potter were thought to be like the clay. 
Woe to us that we would think that the created would aspire to be the creator, is what Isaiah is saying. Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, you did not make me? Can the pot say to the potter, you know nothing? As we pray, as we ask God for his Holy Spirit to reveal truth, and we know what Jesus says, that the wise man is the one who hears my words and puts my words into practice. Holy Father, may we listen and hear your heart of love. May we respond to your great love. And only in our surrender, total devotion, complete, wholehearted devotion, Holy Spirit, do whatever it takes, Holy Spirit, to cause us to bow before your great love. You said, my sheep recognizes my voice and follows me. Oh God, may we have hearts of obedience and surrender and follow, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Dr. Tony Evans, as he continues in his letters to the churches in the Apostle John, it's so interesting that I'm following along his, his uh, lesson uh, and what he says in 10 minutes perfectly, beautifully. Well, you have me, and that's, I'm not Tony Evans. I'm sorry. It takes 30 minutes plus. And even then, I don't get to say it all. So if you want all, you got to go to Dr. Evans, and we have Right Now Media, and you can see us. Or just go to the book and says, Holy Spirit, teach us what Pastor didn't say. And so, but he says that fellowship, and that's the whole nature of the letters of John, is to, to develop intimate and growing relationship with God. But he says fellowship with God is a family affair. John writes to the churches that in the time of intense persecution, where we are scattered, where oftentimes we feel isolated and alone, and we are discouraged because it just seems that no one understands what's going on in my life, when it seems that the center is me, God says you got to change your focus. It's not you. It's me. And as you surrender to me, as you focus to me, he says that we flourish best when we are nurtured and encouraged by those who are spiritually mature. Do you see the process? It doesn't happen overnight. Spiritual growth, becoming more and more like Jesus, is a process. It takes work. It doesn't come automatic. It doesn't just happen overnight. But listen to this, because this is the fallacy. It doesn't take years upon years to grow in the knowledge of the Lord. Because these early Christians, the Bible says, they were willing to pay the price. And it fast-tracked them to grow. So that when the apostles said, there are needs in the church, that we should not neglect the teaching of the Word, the ministry of the Word and prayer. But God has raised some of you that will be servant leaders. Lead by your servant's heart. That there were those that were full of the Spirit, full of wisdom, full of faith. So it didn't take, over, it didn't take years. Some of these Christians were fresh off the birth. A year or two in the faith. So that has hope for all of us. It doesn't take a lifetime, but it does take surrender. It does take daily. If anyone will come after me, he must deny himself. Take up his cross daily. That means got to be careful, intentional with what you do to develop that relationship with the Father, the one true God, Jesus Christ, whom you have said, 
and God's Holy Spirit. And so, the Gospel writer Luke in the book of Acts says that they grew because of their devotion to four things. And if we had the time, I would elaborate, but, but you can read that in Acts chapter 2. Is the apostles' teaching. What did the apostles know? Their main message was Jesus. And so they taught that we had been with Jesus. And Jesus taught and Jesus did miracles. And Jesus gave his life on the cross. And Jesus, by the power of God, was raised to life. Forty days and then Jesus rose in the clouds and with the hope and the promise that he will, will return one day. And they lived with that urgency, believing 2,000 years ago that Jesus would come back in their lifetime. And what that suggests to you and me is we've got to live with that same kind of urgency. We can't say just because didn't, God didn't, Jesus didn't show up 2,000 years that my life will pass and Jesus won't. Can't do that. The Bible speaks that we've got to be prepared. I like that song, ready. We've got to be ready because Jesus may be coming soon. And I believe in this circle, those online, some of you will be here when Jesus comes back in the clouds to receive you. Some of us will be called home before then. I really believe we'll be part of the angel army that's going to come and get the ones that are left behind, left here. But some of you will be here when the Lord returns. And Jesus himself said, when the Son of Man returns, will he find you faithful? Faithfulness. But we know it's not just faithfulness, but fruitfulness. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. So it's not just being faithful, but it's also bearing fruit, making the connections and inviting others. Dr. Evans says, fellowship with God is a family affair. And when God looks at you and me, he sees two kinds of people. Those that are family and those that are family yet to be because the Bible says God doesn't want anybody to miss out. God wants all to come to repentance and faith. And so it is your and my responsibility to go outside of these walls to be ambassadors. But what will they find? Will they find followers that are careful, intentional, or careless? careless about reaching out and making others to be part of the family of God. That's what Dr. Evans shares in this first letter of John. And this is what John writes. I am writing to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. I'm writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, dear children, because you know the Father. And I write to you, Father, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong, and the Word of God lives in you, and you have overcome the evil one. It almost seems like there is a preoccupation. The devil should never be center stage. But by the same token, he should not be ignored. Because the Bible tells us, Jesus says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come. Jesus should be center stage always. But know that the evil one is lurking. And he wants to rob and cheat you and me of the joy and the peace. If there is no peace, you can believe that the evil one is stirring up the pot. Because Jesus says, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. And so if you are at peace, even in the midst of the storm, there can be peace, the kind of peace that Jesus offers, but only if you remain in him. 
And that is why John writes this, is that as spiritual babies or little children, our relationship with God is secure. But to be mature, to bear fruit, we have to grow up. That's why in Hebrews 12, the Hebrew author says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, last week we forgot to recognize the April birthdays, and so those of you that are in, in the online, if you've got an April birthday when it comes time, so keep watching news, we'd love to have you stand up in your living room or on the beach and, and, and hear our applause because we are just applauding that God birthed you in the month of April. But the Bible says that there are a cloud of witnesses that are standing and cheering. You and me on says, don't give it up. Don't neglect. And certainly don't turn around. Stay with Jesus. The Bible says that let us throw off everything that hinders. Is there doubt? Is there depression? Is there discouragement? Do you just seem overwhelmed? Of course, that's life. Jesus says, in this life, you will have trouble. Not the easy life, but be of good cheer because I have overcome. And so it says, the Hebrew author says, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. That's how you run the race. You don't focus on the circumstance, and you certainly don't focus on the teachers that the world presents that wants to detract you or distract you from fixing your eyes on the one who is the author and perfecter of our faith. Because for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. That's what Jesus did for you and me. He scorned the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. You know, for years we had a radio station, KCIF Radio. And I love the acronym, Keeping Christ in Focus, KCIF. That's what it meant, is you got to fix your eyes on the one who began our faith. The Apostle Paul says that he who began the faith is faithful and will carry it on to completion until the day that Jesus returns. He is faithful. And Jesus says, when the Son of Man comes on this earth, what will he find? Well, the Bible tells us, Jesus prophesies that the hearts of many will grow cold. Doesn't that scare you? Doesn't that concern you? That there were times that you were running the race, fixing your eyes on Jesus, but something happened. Something caused you to no longer hear the voice of the Master that says, Come follow me. And you got distracted. And worse, you gave it up. The hearts of many will grow cold, but those that remain faithful to the end will win the prize. He's not talking about salvation, but he's talking the prize of being fruitful and useful in God's kingdom. And that is what you and I are called upon to do. We are called upon to direct our attention, to fix our eyes on Jesus. The Apostle Paul would say, and he taught us, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. That's you and me. We ought to be the ones that says, connect to me. I'm not perfect, but I'm being perfected. So follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. And the Apostle John says, I write to you fathers. That should be the goal. Some of us have never married. Some of us don't have children. Some of us don't have grandchildren. But we are called upon to be spiritual parents, helping to lead others. And the Apostle Paul tells us this in his letter to the Philippian church. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, 
Keep your eyes on those who live as we do. There's going to be a lot of counterfeits as we progress, as Jesus' coming becomes more and more imminent. There will be others that will be raised up to distract us, the Apostle John says. And so he says this as he continues. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Worldliness. Dr. Evans describes worldliness as any perspective that excludes God. Any system of Satan that leaves God out. We live in this world, but we cannot love the world. Jesus said in Matthew 6, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God. To serve God wholeheartedly, only he can be the one that occupies the throne of your life and mine. Ezekiel says it this way. Hundreds of years before Jesus came, Ezekiel said this, uh, or God said this to the prophet Ezekiel. Then the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, watch out for these men. Because they have set up idols in their hearts. And they put wicked stumbling blocks before their faces. Should I let them inquire of me at all? Therefore speak to them and tell them this is what the sovereign Lord says. When any of the Israelites set up idols in their hearts. And put a wicked stumbling block before their faces and go to a prophet. I, the Lord, will answer them myself in keeping with their great idolatry. God defines idolatry in the heart. Anything that will not surrender to God and give him total devotion. Can we possibly have idols in our hearts? Absolutely. That's the challenge. That when you and I come to the Lord every day, We've got to make sure that we are focused, that we are attentive, so that the voice of the Lord will speak to us. And we talk about it all the time. Does God say, Daniel, this is God speaking? Rarely. I don't believe it's ever happened to me in almost 50 years of being a Christ follower. But God speaks to you and me every single day as we open his word as we allow God's Holy Spirit to speak to us to, so that when we pray and when we hear from God, God speaks, does he not? Amos, another prophet, says, The days are coming, declares the Sovereign Lord, where I will send a famine through the land. Not a famine of food or thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Isn't that scary? Church doors will be open, but you will find teachers that for whatever reason have so been deceived that they're not speaking, thus saith the Lord. They're tickling our ears with their own teachings and thinking that God does not see and God does not know. God knows. God sees. And finally, in chapter 2, and the time has quickly passed. You're going to have to read this or watch the video, because like I said, Dr. Evans is incredible. He can say it in 10 minutes, but he reserves the best teaching. The Apostle John says, Dear children, this is the last hour, and as you've heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. Have you made the connection? 2,000 years ago, there were those called the Antichrist. I believe that even now, the world has infiltrated 
the community of faith, you got to be careful. You got to be able to discern what is of God and what is not because it says that these deceivers called Antichrist, their goal is to draw us away from the intimacy with God. And I like how Dr. Evans says, intimacy with God means that that will produce the fellowship with God that produces growth to know God, to know Jesus more intimately. But he says this, dear children, you have heard they won't. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. But don't you love? God left for you and me the antidote in verse 20. You have an anointing from the Holy One. And you, all of you, know the truth. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it. And because no lie comes from the truth. And who is the liar? It is whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is the Antichrist, denying the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father, and whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. And this is the key. I close with this thought. As for you, see that what you have heard from the beginning remains. You gotta keep on stoking your faith and your relationship. Don't allow anyone, don't give anyone the power to cause you to be distracted from the truth, from Christ. They should not have the power, and the power, divine power, His divine power gives us everything we need. That's the true source of power. But others will claim they have the power, the anointing. But Amos tells us centuries ago, one day there will be those that will produce a famine of hearing from the word. The deception will ramp up. But he says that as for you, see that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. And if it does then you also will remain in the Son and in the Father. And what he has promised to us, eternal life, that we may know the one true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. As we pray together, as the Father continues to lead us, Holy Spirit, we are so thankful for your presence with us. We brought you here to this gathering place and we will take you with us when we leave. And you always go before us. You know our going and our coming. You know the struggles that we will have in this week. And yet, Lord, you said that you have given to us all that we need because God is able to do immeasurably more. And we can ask humbly. And what we ask, Holy Father, you said that he who seeks me with all of their hearts, they will find me. Oh God, may we find you faithful. And may you find us following you faithfully and fruitfully. Guide us, help us, strengthen us, lead us, we pray, so that we might be the connectors to those that are the family yet to be. May they see in us you, Holy Spirit, and you will draw them to yourself, to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to be those kind of representatives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we stand together, as our praise team presses us really when we leave here to be His as we stand together.
proclamation this week that we will sing of the name of Jesus in the valleys, on the mountaintops, we'll shout it for joy. You are our refuge and our strength in our time of need. We proclaim that you will forever reign and therefore we will forever praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Wow, you may be seated. I don't know about you, are you, are you glad you, you came today? I, I am. I know I'm glad that I came today. Um, Kibach News, I, w- I want to start with uh, Pastor Daniel, you have a quick announcement and then we'll, we'll get to the rest of business. You know, I have to apologize. Uh, I know that in the newsletter, and if you're not on the weekly newsletter, all we need is your email address so on that blue card. says, I want to be on the newsletter, but we were going to... Uh, recognize Denise Drake for her almost 15 years of serving as our enrichment program director. But this past week, she admitted that she was in close contact with someone who tested positive. And she, although she tested negative, she says, I just don't want to put the church family in, into harm's way. And so she felt that, that she needed to stay home for this uh, Uh, because she knew that people would come up and hug her and all of that. And sure enough, in the first service, there was a family that we hadn't seen in a while, and they said, we came to say uh, uh, thank you to Denise. And I said, I'm sorry, she's not going to be here. But we are planning a later time in May, and that will give opportunity for us to to just uh, recognize uh, how, how she has served us. But sorry. Uh, we didn't do it this morning in the 8 o'clock service. We hope to do it sometime later this month. But keep on praying for them. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Daniel. Um, yeah, thank you. Oh, you have something else, sir? No? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm Carl Sunagawa, Associate Pastor here, and this is Kibach News. All the news and happenings with Kino Ole Baptist Church this week. Uh, first thing, uh, please continue to join us in prayer for all that is happening in Ukraine Um, We have, uh, send your friends and family to our website. We have a link that you can click on, and there's a prayer guide. You know, we need to be praying for our Christian brothers and sisters in Christ that are ministering to the needs of those in Ukraine. It's it's, it's really uh, tragic what's going on there. So let's continue to be in prayer. Also, we want to let you know that our summer enrichment program is on. It is a go. And so uh, June 13th, through July 22nd, it's all day. Um, if you want to know about like, details about like the fees and you know the cost of everything, uh, you can email enrichmentprogramkibach at gmail.com. But here's where we need your help: spread the word. Spread the word. Um, initially, we needed 20 kids, uh, ages four years and eight months uh, to 13 years old. We needed 20 to get the program going, but we decided we're we're, we're going for it, and so. Uh, we're on, and it's, uh, it's an exciting thing to look forward to. So um, this, the theme this year is Spark Studios, and I listened to some of the VBS songs. It's good. It's catchy. So I'm excited. All right. Okay, so for the Annie Armstrong, I want to make sure I get this right here. Uh, for the month of April, and I think some of March, too, we actually shared um, the Annie Armstrong videos. And so I wanted to give a report. All that money, right, 100% of that money goes to the North American Mission Board, which supports missionaries that we send all across North America. Um, Bobby, have you, you or Mickey been a North American Board missionary before? I know I have through the program, but no? Okay, okay. Um, yes, yeah, okay, yeah. Right, right. So you folks have benefited from it. I know I have. Our church has uh, over the years. But we, as a church, um, have given, get this, $3,151.31 to the, to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful to be a part of a church that gives, that's so generous, that cares, not just about what's going on internally, but externally as well. That is our way, uh, one of the ways, many ways, that we proclaim the love of Christ by giving to the North American Mission Board. So praise God for that. I want to also remind you that we are currently 
in this uh, uh, series on 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Uh, you can go on Right Now Media uh, and, and view videos that uh, correlates with uh, Pastor Daniel's messages. And so um, we are currently in week two, so you can check that out on Right Now Media. Um, yeah, Tony Evans, we've seen him at the hymn conference and stuff before. He has a way of, when he talks about the Bible, you're just like, hmm, the Bible's so good, man. You know, just, like, just the way he talks, you know, it's like, ooh, so sweet, you know. This is so good, so encouraging. So I want to encourage you to, to check that out. Um, and with that said, we didn't have uh, this last week. We, we forgot to do it. So we're going to do it this week, even though we are on, in, in the month of May. If you had an April birthday, would you please stand all right. Now, if you are online, if you're online, you won't see that no one's standing, but maybe one of you online. What is that now? Uh huh. 90th. Wow. Okay. So uh, if you folks didn't hear that, Terry Oka celebrated her 90th birthday in the month of April. But, uh, you know, we. we, we stream online so we don't know if uh, someone online had an April birthday so if you are online right now would you just stand in your living room <laughs> and just sing happy birthday let's sing this together happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday God bless you happy birthday to you and right on we're going to call Pastor Daniel to give us a final word, and then we'll close in song. Many of you have heard the priestly uh, um, uh, blessing that is found in number six. We have, and you know, I have to tell you, one of our former church members were a part of the Hawaii blessing, that song uh, that the Hawaiian Island Ministries composed or actually uh, compiled and so you can go on to our website and actually see uh, and hear it was uh, 27 churches across our islands where uh, their worship leaders used were used to to sing that but we're not that good or i'm not that good so i'm just going to read the blessing and pray the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine upon you be gracious to you the lord turn his face toward you and give you peace holy spirit May you grant us peace because, Lord, the peace is fully and totally dependent on you. And you lead us. May we hear your voice and follow you and be a light the world that the world will see your light in us and be drawn to you and be saved. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand.
someone this week.